today is the most manic day ever. I have so many people here. I've been up all night with an upset stomach and I haven't slept and I'm in so much pain. I've got stomach cramps. I don't know, actually I do know where it's come from. It's probably come from the baby lambs because I've been kissing them too much and they all had diarrhea and now I've got it. Happy times! Anyway, I feel like death, but I have so much to do. So I'm gonna crack on. Come on then, Manic. You can come with us and see this lovely cleaner. Oh, it smells good already. Oh, How are you getting on? We're getting there. Is it um, a nightmare? It's just the mouse droppings, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So to explain, I've had a mouse infestation in my kitchen. And if you come and look here, look, you can see it, right? And it is everywhere. And about two, three weeks ago, I gave up on even entering this room because I couldn't cope. And I didn't even know where to start. And I'm too busy to clean the whole entire kitchen, looking after animals, obviously. And I literally just had a meltdown and was like, I can't deal with this. So I basically shut the door and went, not doing it. And I put um, mouse traps everywhere to trap them and dispose of them, get rid of them into the countryside. Um, and now we think all the mice have gone. And then completely as the timing would have it, this amazing woman, Emma, uh, got in touch and said, I can, she, I've got all these special products, blah, blah, blah. I can come and clean your kitchen for you. And I was like, yes, please. So I said to her, it's really, really, really bad. Um, I don't think she realised how bad it was. We're getting that. No. <laughs> did you, did you know it was going to be this bad? No, every time I open a cupboard, I'm like, oh, more stuff. Yeah. But we're getting there. Everywhere, these are all. Yeah, they're nice all clear. All oh, nice. lovely. Lovely. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. there must have been a herd of mice. Oh, there's hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. They'd taken over. The, I mean, they were cooking themselves dinner every night <laughs> in here. They were. They were literally just helping themselves to all the food, cooking dinner, using the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave up. I went, I can't even deal with it and just left it. Because all the wildlife know that this is an animal rescue. So all they want to do is come and um, move in. We get it all the Literally. time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, I'm now a bit worried that I might have ORF, which is a contagious disease. ORF is a contagious disease from lambs. My fingers got like these pussy, swollen lumps on it. Look, they're pussing. And... Uh, so now I'm thinking I might have off. That would be brilliant to add to the upset stomach. Yay. Now I've got to feed the meerkats. Honestly, it is carnage here. We've got a pregnant horse. We've got four, five baby lambs, um, one of which is paralysed. Her back legs are paralysed, so we're having to put her in wheels every day to let her walk around. Manic, don't chase the ducks. Manic likes all the ducks and the geese to be in the pond. They live in the pond, so they must stay in the pond. So every day that he comes around here, he chases them all back into the pond. Because he's like, no, you are not allowed to be out here. Right, meerkats. Manic! Look, Manic's playing with the fox. Yeah, the foxes love playing with Manic, but they don't like it when he barks. And I don't know why he has to shout the whole time, because, like, just play with them quietly. Manic, stop shouting! I need to check this enclosure. On Saturday, we have 11 monkeys coming. And we've been getting this enclosure ready for them. Uh, we have marmosets, 11 marmosets come in, they're about that big. One of them has just had two babies. This is their indoor bit. Yeah, that's all done, isn't it? The light, yep. Perfect. They're coming from up north, the people are bringing them to us. Um, 
but they just basically need a new home. Um, there's a real problem with marmosets at the moment, which is that they've just passed a new law that says, because up until, I think it was the 5th of March when they passed the law, anybody could have a marmoset as a pet. And they've just passed a new law that basically means anyone with marmosets will have to be licensed. And they've given everybody a year to get their license. Well, what's going to happen is in a year's time, there's going to be 10,000 marmosets needing homes and the rescues are all going to be full up and there's going to be nowhere for them to go. And it's going to be like the XL bully thing all over again. There's just going to be marmosets being put to sleep. It's going to be horrific. So luckily this couple who are bringing them on Saturday have planned ahead and thought, we better find a home for ours now before the... Oh, I've got to take this, it's the council. Hello. Um, obviously loads has changed here. We've added so much to the place. Obviously we've, we're getting uh, monkeys. Soon there's one type of monkey going in this side and another type of monkey going in that side. Uh, so we're building enclosures. Obviously Hayley the wolf is outside now with Hope. They're very happy. Hope literally wants to live outside. She hates being indoors and I used to fight with her every night to try and get her in. And I mean fight, to like she does not want to be indoors. So she's the happiest she's ever been because she's now living out here with Hayley. They do still get walked. Um, and exercised and all the rest of it, but they're so happy living outside. Obviously, we've got all our foxes, and um, we've got more foxes coming tomorrow. There's four in here. Um, these guys can't be released. Um, Flinty, the big boy, he was born and raised in captivity as a pet, so he wouldn't survive in the wild because he doesn't have any survival skills. He's just like, he's basically like a pet dog. Um, Adam up there, he uh, basically, Adam and Alec, the two boys in here, oh, and the other girl actually, um, Amber, they're all disabled. So again, can't be released into the wild because they have special needs. So um, we've got our amazing fox enclosure, and we've got more foxes coming tomorrow. So this is our tawny owl. Um, she fell, fell down somebody's chimney and the woman scooped her up and brought her here. And I didn't get a good look at her for a while because what we do with wild birds is we don't overhandle them because you want to release them back into the wild. So I really didn't get a good look at her. I put her into a box, an owl box, and fed her and got her better. You know, she was obviously quite poorly. She was dehydrated and hungry and stuff, covered in soot because she'd fallen down someone's chimney. But she, oh, I thought I was going to have to bath her, but she actually bathed herself, which was great. Got all the soot off her. Anyway, I didn't look at her for a few weeks properly because we don't like to overhandle them because you're releasing them back into the wild. When I finally did look at her, her wing is so badly damaged, she can't fly at all, cannot fly. She can hop, she can hop about, hence why she can go into this box because she hops up here like this, but she physically can't take off and fly. So if we released her back into the wild now, she would not survive. She would be eaten immediately by the first fox or whatever came along. So she has to stay with us for life. She's in here. Hello, beautiful. You've made some good pellets in there, haven't you? Look, she's beautiful. All those white things on the floor are her pellets. That's her pellets. They regurgitate all the stuff they don't need from their food. But she cannot fly at all. So, um, yeah, she would be eaten in the wild. She wouldn't survive five minutes. Um, but she's quite happy in here. She loves her little box. She sleeps in her box all day, comes out of a night, eats her food, potters around on the floor as a bath in her water. You know, she's quite happy. Um, so she's going to have to stay with us for life because she just wouldn't survive in the wild. The raccoon dogs look really scruffy at the moment because they've um, they're shedding their winter fur. So all this fur on the floor, this is off of these. There's shedding fur everywhere, but we leave it all because the birds take it and make nests out of it. It's lovely and warm, that fur, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Reggie, you are such a handsome boy. Yeah, so these guys can't ever be released into the wild because they're um, invasive. They're not native to this country. They're from Japan. Um, they're bred for their fur normally and skinned alive, which is obviously horrific. Uh, but these guys came from a lady I know who um, had them as pets 
and basically had a few dramas happen and a few things go on and she didn't have the time to dedicate to them anymore and asked if I would take them because she knew I would give them lots and lots of love. Um, so we took them and they are very, very happy and we're obsessed with them. But you do have to have licenses to keep these guys because, because they're invasive. So um, you can't just have these as pets. Nobody should have these as pets, really. Um, some people will recognise this guy from YouTube and Facebook and Instagram because um, he's quite famous online. Foxy! Hello! Uh, who is painting the spare bedroom for me. Um, so I'm gradually doing up one bedroom at a time because uh, obviously I only moved in here last summer and I haven't been here that long but obviously all I have done since I moved in is animal stuff. Build shelters and enclosures and put fencing up and all the rest of it, you know, we've done, everything I've done is just for the animals. So now it's time to try and get the house straight. And um, so I've done one bedroom, I've finished. I mean, I didn't actually decorate it. I just hung a load of my own stuff on the walls. Wait, show them the, show them the height difference in this room. <laughs> this, is how, this is how I've got to work. <laughs> Every single room as well. So my back is absolutely killing me, but it's for a good cause. It is. It is. And think about it, when it's all done and lovely and we have three spare beautiful guest rooms, yeah. you can come and stay with your family and like come and have a weekend on the farm and chill out and it. it'd See be all amazing. The foxes. Yeah. And hang with all the foxes. With my friends. Because we've got more coming tomorrow. Yeah. I can't wait to meet them. He hasn't actually told me how many are coming. We're taking fox cubs and another adult fox tomorrow, but he hasn't told me how many are coming. I'm going to lie about how many there are and try and sneak one out in my Oh, uh, yeah. Head. He only brought <laughs> four, I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm sure there was five. <laughs> but, yeah, so we've got baby fox cubs coming tomorrow. You're excited for that, aren't I'm you? very excited for that. I'm very excited to meet them. I'm very excited for this room. To I wonder painted. if I'll be their daddy and they'll be like... Oh, yeah, they'll know. They'll go, yeah. Foxy. <laughs> Can I just point out that, look, this is what we're getting rid of in here because I hate these blue and yellow stencils with a passion. These were already here when I moved in, obviously. This is my wall that I've been testing paint colours on. And um, We're going for that one on the far end there, aren't we, Joe? That one. Jojo. Yeah, because like, this is going to be, this room's going to be like a ski lodge. It's going to be all sort of a bit dark, but like all wood and like fake fur rustic. and yeah mm. very rustic very ski lodgy um very cozy because the room next door is all glitter and bling yeah. wow. so i want every room's gonna have a different theme yeah it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be lovely i'm gonna make the curtains myself it's very exciting so i'm all right to leave you to crack on yeah, yeah? i'm gonna crack on in here get as much as i can done today but i'll be back yeah. tomorrow perfect for another one Perfect. Right, I'll be back in a little while. Yesterday we took a lamb um, who's paralysed from the waist down, so she can't walk. She's in here. Um, she can't walk, she can't stand up, but knowing that we were getting her yesterday, I'd contacted another charity um, called Pumpkin and Friends, and all they do is supply wheels to animals that are paralysed. So we got her a set of wheels made up, ready for her arrival. And the second we got her, we gave her a bottle and then we put her in the wheels and she loved it. And it made us very happy. And lots of people cried. Hello, babies. Hello, bubbers. Yes, hello. Hello, hello, Joey. So that's little lady over there. She obviously can't stand up by herself. We have to go in and lift her up and put her in her wheels. Um, Poor little lady, but the boys are being really good with her. They're snuggling up with her, aren't you? You snuggling? Let's wipe your eye bogies. Why have you got so many eye bogies? Oh dear. I'm just wiping your eye bogies off. There. Oh dear. Oh dear. Can I get those ones? So these stinkers, they've all had really bad diarrhoea. Luckily, it's all cleared up now. Their poos are all hard now. We had them tested for absolutely everything at the vets and it all came back clear. So they had nothing wrong with them at all. Just, it was probably due to really poor diet or lack of diet. And then they came here and 
well, they came to us with diarrhoea, but I mean, it, it was probably just they weren't being fed and then the diarrhoea continued because then as they were getting fed, it was, you know, they're suddenly having this lovely rich milk that they should have been having all along and then that prolonged the diarrhoea. But we got them onto, I use a supplement for baby lambs and it's never failed me yet. I've used it every year. Whenever we have lambs come in that are orphaned, um, they always end up with diarrhoea, always. And I use this supplement called Gut Right and it is amazing. And you just add a bit to their milk and it makes their poos hard. It completely clears up the diarrhoea. I actually need some myself today. I wonder if you can use it on humans. I do use lots of animal products on myself, as in like, there's this cream that's like a healing cream for wounds. It's the best thing in the world and I always use it on myself. Um, it's only meant for animals, but it does the job. Another thing that people don't realise about lambs is they, lamb is actually lamb, as in it, it, lamb that you eat is baby lamb. So these guys would go to slaughter at 10 weeks old, some as young as 10 weeks old, some 12 weeks old. They go when they're actual babies. If you think about the size of a lamb chop, it's small, isn't it? It's not a big hunk of meat. It, a lamb chop is a small thing. Well, it's because it's off a baby lamb. Um, so every year we save as many as we can from slaughter. This year we've had five so far. No doubt there'll be more, um, but we love our baby lambs and I love bottle feeding. Um, and you're safe. You're not going to end up on somebody's plate. See, when lambs first come in, they'll, they'll always have like a snotty nose, crusty eyes, diarrhea, and it's all just from poor living conditions. So once they have been with us for a week or two, they're all back to full health. Um, I love you. I love you. Yeah, once they've been with us for a week or two, they're back to full health and, you know, nothing wrong with them. But I've never yet had a baby lamb come in healthy, ever. Poor living conditions, not being fed the right food, not being fed enough food, living in dirty barns with their own poo and pee and stuff. It's just, they don't have a good time, lambs, do you? But you do when you come here. Once you come to Fripps, you have a good time. Yes, I love you. So we have a company called Sign Language Essex and um, they make our merchandise, our Fripps merchandise. Now, um, we don't have anything to do with it. They're a separate company to us. They make the merchandise, they sell the merchandise for us. But what they do is they make a donation to us for every item sold. They make a donation to Fripps Farm. So just for the month of March alone, just for the month of March in Fripps merchandise, we got 800 pounds in donations from people buying the Fripps Farm merchandise. And our merchandise, I mean, I, I design it all with her. We design it together. And I have to say, not blowing my own trump here, but it is amazing, right? Because not only can you get jumpers, like the Fripps Farm jumpers with the logos on and all of that, you can get all the logo stuff, but we also have really funny, like t-shirts and hoodies, things with slogans on, like things that are just funny, especially I find them really funny, like one of my favorite ones, um, vegan, because my body isn't a graveyard. So good. And uh, things like, we've got t-shirts that say, I prefer animals to humans. Um, and uh, I've got a hoodie, the hoodie's amazing, that says, I don't eat dead bodies. And so they're like, they're really sort of pro-vegan and vegetarian, or they're not all vegan and vegetarian, but they're pro-vegan and vegetarian. But also we have ones for just animal lovers in general. Like we've got one that says the dog father, um, you know, and um, tell your cat, I said, pss, pss, pss. So obviously we all do pss, 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 to a cat. Uh, so they're just funny slogan t-shirts and hoodies, but they're amazing, they're so cool, and they're really good quality. So, oh, oh, quick, quick, they're putting Foxy in her, in her wheels. <laughs> Little lady. You's going for a walk, little lady. It's time for your midday walk. Okay, I'm good to go. Right, carry her just to the concrete. We need to clean her sides as well because where she's been laying and done a pee, she's got a bit, look, yeah. that needs cleaning quickly because we don't want the ammonia on her. Little lady. I've just woken up. <laughs> come on, little lady, come for a little walk. Come on, come this way. There we go. There we go. Good girl. You good girl. You good girl, you're so clever. 
You're so clever. Yes, you are. You're so clever. Keep walking. Yeah. Yeah, you good girl. Hey. You are such a good girl, aren't you? You're such a good girl. Clover, um, one of our horses, this is the horse that took us five weeks to catch. She was out, um, this is this one here, she was out in a field running alongside a road. She was running in and out of the road. Took us five weeks to catch her with three different dart guns and God knows what. Anyway, turns out we think she's pregnant. Um, I mean, if she's not pregnant, there's something seriously wrong because that belly is another level. But uh, horses are pregnant for 11 months and we've only had her about five or six months. She definitely couldn't have got pregnant here because none of our boys have balls. And um, also she's never been in with a boy here. She's only ever been either on her own or with Minnie May, our other uh, mare. And, but she's heavily pregnant, we think. Everybody who's seen her agrees, the vet agrees. We haven't actually checked her because she's still very flighty and scared of people. She was obviously badly mistreated. Um, so we haven't done any checks or anything, but just by looking at her, the vet and everybody agrees she is heavily pregnant. Um, so she could well have been, you know, four or five months pregnant when we rescued her, but none of us knew because um, she wasn't showing. But she, I think she's due within the next month or so. I think she's due pretty soon. Um, her belly's enormous. She's drinking a lot more than normal, weeing a lot more than normal. Um, she's showing all the signs of pregnancy. Her nipples are huge. Um, so yeah, I think she's she's due quite soon. Which, I mean, it's no hardship to have a foal born on the farm, especially when it's not our fault. We didn't know anything about it. Well, not that Ernie was our fault either, that was a happy accident, but, you know, we, don't, we certainly don't breed things. But yeah, Clover, was 100% pregnant before we rescued her and we didn't know. The thing is, do you know what stresses me out? Is she's had three, three dart guns in her whilst pregnant. I mean, that is not good. That's not good for a pregnant mare. <laughs>